It's a little bit cold here in Pittsburgh today, so our video is really appropriate. We're going to show you how to heat a curbless shower. So specifically, we're going to show you how to heat a Schluter curbless shower using Dietrich heat cables. We're also going to give you tips on how to waterproof that entire shower floor and start the tiling process. Here's the deal. In our prior tutorials, we show you how to install Dietrich heat mat over top of our wood subfloor and next to the Schluter curtain line channel body and inside the curbless shower. So you can check out those tutorials. We also have a video that shows you how to pull the wiring through the box and how to install the heat cable over top of the Dietrich heat mat outside the shower. Now in today's video, we're gonna show you how to install the Dietrich heat cable inside the curbless shower. The next step after running the heat cable in the main bathroom floor area was to apply Schluter All Set. This is their thin set mortar over top of the seams and waterproof those seams using Schluter's Curdy Band. Now this is ultra important outside of the curbless shower area. And in particular, this is the seam right outside the curbless shower pan. So we waterproof that using the curdy band and you want to flatten that as much as possible the same thing goes up against your pipe that's coming up out of the floor for the toilet you want to add curdy band over top of Schluter all set and waterproof that so if there is a leak it won't go down through the toilet pipe in our prior tutorial we show you how to embed the cold splice sub flush with the Dietrich heat mat but here what we're doing is applying more all set over top of the cold splice and then adding the Schluter curdy band over top of it and what that'll do is push down the cold splice and then we ran our floor sensor in a zigzag pattern and put that in the center of the floor so that it can sense whether the floor is going to be hot or cold. The rest of the Schluter all set was used over top of the Dietrich heat studs to fill in those grooves and to prep the floor for tile. This next part is critical. You want to keep the heat cable at least two inches away from the channel body and what we did here is we cut a groove out of the curdy board so that our heat cable could go over that groove and sit flush with the top of the curdy board. Now what we're going to do is fill that groove in with thin set and then apply curdy band over top of it. Make sure you follow your local electrical code when doing this. Once the Dietrich heat cable was inside the curbless shower area, we followed Schluter's handbook for the Dietrich heat and made sure that the cable was at least four inches away from the center of the drain for our channel body. That's also a really important principle to follow. We did a three stud spacing inside the curbless shower and that worked out perfectly for our planning purposes. We cut a two inch piece of PVC to size so that it would fit in the rubber fern co that comes with the channel body. So we're just tightening that PVC pipe to the fern co and applying ample amount of Schluter all set into the studs of the Dieter heat mat. We're going to do that on both sides of the channel body. That way when you dry fit this you'll get a good idea of how the channel body is going to fit and so we just dry fit this and then we both primed and added cement to our PVC both inside the coupling and on the surface of that pipe so we got our drain in place then we applied thin set into that groove that we cut out for the Dietrich heat cables and then smoothed out the curdy band that's on the channel body both over the Dietrich heat and on the wall. So we're just smoothing out and applying thin set to the wall here. And then we're making sure that that curdy band is gonna fit nice and tight to both the Dietrich heat mat and the walls. You wanna get that as smooth as possible so you don't have any issues with the tile. Once the channel body was set, we applied more all set to the main Dietrich heat mat that's in the curbless shower area, filled all of that, and then applied our big piece of curdy membrane over top of the heat cables and the shower pan. We just embedded that in place using a grout float, making sure that we don't have a ton of thin set between the shower pan and the curdy membrane. Now, before we did that, we actually applied thin set to the walls and added our curdy band in the corners and over top of all of the seams that are inside the shower. So we actually did this before we added the curdy membrane over top of the curbless shower pan area. So again, you want two inch minimum overlap on your seams with your curdy band and smoothing out any of the thin set with a six inch drywall knife really helps out. The other thing that we did here is we applied thin set around our roughing valve and added the mixing valve seal. Now note it is backwards and the reason why that's the case is because of our Kohler valve. We had to set it backwards but only because of that particular roughing valve. Now we applied thin set over top of the pipe that's coming out of the wall for our shower, our shower head that is, and we added the, another 
seal to seal off that area. The next step was to apply thin set to both the curdy board and the curdy membrane over top of the curbless shower, then embed the curdy band into that. So remember to keep the two inch overlap between the curdy band and any change of plane. It's super important per the Schluter handbook. So the plumbing wall also got this and we trimmed in this case the curdy band the size using scissors because it's just so much better than a utility knife whenever you're trying to trim fit it against that channel body. So all three walls got the curdy band. Then for the two inside corners we applied thin set to the walls and the curdy over the curbless shower pan and embedded the inside corners to make sure that this complete curbless shower installation was 100% waterproof. Tiling the shower pan began by doing a dry layout to see how these hex tiles would work and we used the mini puma to cut all of them. This was a really great tool. As you can see we went with a half pattern at the wall leaving our expansion and contraction joint. A one quarter inch by one quarter inch square notch trowel was used for these six inch hex tiles. We wiped down the curdy membrane with a damp sponge and then burned thin set with the flat side of the trowel and then added more thin set using the notch side again using directional troweling for optimum coverage. These tiles were back buttered to make sure that the bond was optimal between the tile and the curdy membrane. We pulled up one of the tiles to make sure that we got the coverage that we wanted and as you can see here it was really consistent and good. Now we spaced the tiles such that the wall tile would hide the gap. We also used these Tuscan seam clips for tile leveling. This really helped out a lot with these hex tiles and at the tileable grate you can see that our pattern worked out wonderfully. So we removed that grate and cleaned it off because it's never a good idea to have thin set in the grate or the channel body. And the nice thing with this pattern and with the tileable grate you can have a seamless transition from the curbless shower into the main bathroom floor area and we're really happy with this layout. It's so cold that my eyes are watering. Now in the next video we're going to give you tips on how to tile the shower walls inside this Schluter curbless shower. So make sure you stay tuned for that and remember if you want more detailed tips and tricks on how to remodel a bathroom check out Bathroom Repair Tutor. It's awesome and it'll definitely help you out with your projects. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.